Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Kingston Five Productions. My name is Brian Silla, and joining me is a filmmaker, a photographer, uh, Cheryl Mater. Uh, uh, Cheryl, thank you for uh, joining us. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. All right, awesome. So, uh, so yeah. talking about uh, filmmaking and photography, uh, what got you into both, or just it, was it kind of like? it's one without the other? Is it that you found one and then, oh man, I could do this, and then you found the other? Well, I, I actually started 30 years ago. Hmm. I was living in Switzerland, hmm. and um, it was in my early 20s, I was living in Switzerland, and a friend of mine happened to give me a camera and another friend happened to give me their darkroom equipment at the time. And so I just immersed myself in it and I came, and this is a true story, I came out of the darkroom and I said, this is it. I don't care what I have to do with my life, no matter what, if I have to live on nothing, I, um, I am becoming a photographer. And so uh, I left Switzerland after some period, and then I moved to San Francisco where I started my studio. And out of nothing, I uh, began to shoot. I began to shoot fashion. And after some years, I began to shoot like advertising. And always my artistic, it came from an artistic place, my work. And um, I started shooting national campaigns and um, uh, my studio became very successful there. What happened was I wanted to, sh I was shooting skinny fashion models and I wanted to shoot regular women, to, you know, and I had the idea to shoot women, full size, uh, first regular women in lingerie and then I shot full-sized women in lingerie, and that became the inspiration for that Dove campaign on Real Women, Real Beauty, which helps change the way women are now seen in the global media today. And um, after a while, I said, you know, I want to focus. I saw what was happening in the Miami area. My studio was in San Francisco, and I saw what was happening in Miami during Art Basel was just coming, whatever. And I said, I am going to immerse myself in fine art. So my husband and I, who's an abstract painter, we moved here to um, Southeast Florida near Miami. And I immersed myself in my art. And um, at that time, I started also working in film. So, you know, after some years, I started working with fit film and I'm just madly in love with visual art and expressing myself. So that's basically how it came about. And to me, my work always told stories. So to me, it's natural that I went to film and my films are short films, you know, video installation films. Wow. Okay. So, wow. That's interesting. Uh, so, oh, I mean, there, no, it's a lot. Um, so, okay. All right. Let me, because there are some things like, okay, first off the film development, because I'm, you know, I, I just got out of college uh, recently. I've only really known I've, you know, I've maybe shot with film a few times. I work with like Canon 70 Ds and some of the video equipment. Talk to us about like, the, the film development process and what, what that was like. Or in, in the dark rooms. In the dark room? Yeah, okay. yeah, my bad, my bad. I, okay, no, when I was in Switzerland, that's when I had my dark room. Mm. And the dark room, it's a lot like Photoshop <laughs> that hmm. you do now, except you're involved with the chemicals and watching it take fruition and and I remember my face would break out from all the chemicals but I didn't mm. care after a while. but when I moved when I you know relocated to San Francisco and started my studio there 
after a while, it developed, the digital world happened. Mm -hmm. And it started basically around in San Francisco. So I was like in it. Mm. So I immersed myself in it. And it's all a tool. You know, right. to me, everything comes from the inside out. Mm. And you need to learn technique. Like I learned, you know, while in San Francisco, I learned all lighting and, you know, and, and the technique, but it's like, once you learn the technique for riding the bike or, or working my camera, I took my camera and it became my instrument, hmm. like my piano. Hmm. And actually what happened is, um, some, before I moved to the Miami area, I went to, on a trip to the Costa Brava in Spain and how I normally shoot didn't feel right. So I started experimenting with my camera and I became like an abstra abstractionist and impressionist, you know, with my camera. So I, I know how to, to use it for filmmaking and also for my stills. I want to ask you about that because you mentioned fashion and looking at your work, it's a lot of, you said exp experimental or abstract or just nature shots. Um, what was it like working in fashion and working with, uh, with essentially like portraits and, and stuff like that that you mentioned about uh, filming like the real women? Like, what was that like? Yeah, I'm really great with people. You know, I love people. I love the intimate connection with people. Mm. So when I would work, I would work, you know, with a lot of models. I worked from adults to, uh, to children, to babies and whatever. And I worked with a team of people. Like when I was in San Francisco shooting, it wasn't just me. I had my assistants, my digital assistant, and then there'd be a stylist, hair and makeup stylist, um, a producer. And so you're working with a team of people. And when you, you're working with a model, it's I always made a connection, a heart connection. And I think that's how my work came out so, you know, so great is because I made that connection like everything that I do comes from that place and so my work now it's more conceptual especially during this pandemic we're actually working on this incredible film now I'm doing this whole new series called Supernatural and uh, when you see the work it looks it very conceptual, but it looks like I did it digitally, but everything is done on location with the natural elements, the wind, the light. And we're now working on the film for it. So I'm like really excited. Great, what's, what's that like working now in, in live production? I love it because, hmm. you know, during this, I, I started it in March. Hmm with this pandemic happening. Mm -hmm. And the only place we can go was the place that I particularly love was in nature. So we started um, going into the forests. And um, it was actually incredible loving it. It's a lot of work because what I am using for this work is with what's called it's echo it's with what's, what's that word uh it's very sustainable and mm. but it's like holy powder mm. it's from india but it's very sustainable and uh, uh it's very hard to use because of the wind the lighting and whatever but we're getting this most incredible images and um i was also filming and then I went from shooting in the forest to shooting at the ocean. And, you know, we're shooting there when there's minimal people there or none at all. So it's okay. been, it, it, it could be a, a bonus because you don't have to deal with like 
outside factors, let's say, of like just people coming oh, in. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. And you know, I feel um, the most comfortable when I'm out in nature. Talking about nature, because uh, talking about uh, we have um, uh, I am climate change is another film of yours. Would right. you say that uh, that nature inspires you? What uh, in, uh, in addition to nature, uh, what inspires you to make films and to and to do this work? It's very much on a uh, instinctual level. But I think all my work, um, you know, everyone has their own style. And, you know, my work is always changing and shifting. So it's, it's never the same because I feel like we're never the same. We're always like shifting internally. So that affects our work. Hmm. And so, um, yeah, there is not one thing but, I feel very, con um, perhaps it's my spiritual belief, or, but I feel very connected. You know, my work is about connection, actually. Connection to the self, each other, and to all life forms on this planet. And I think that also contains the universe. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think we're energy, and we're all part of the universe. So it affects my work, how I shoot. And that's basically why I did, like, I am climate change. I shot, I came up with the idea with uh, this other artist. Her name is Marilyn Walter for I am climate change. But it's about that we are not separate from nature. We are nature. Mm. So I don't feel, you know, it's not like a lot of times we humans feel like, oh, we're in control of everything, of of all the elements in nature. Mm. That's I've, heard of, I've, I've heard other people you know, talk about like um, a particle soup or essentially that the universe is just like a, an atom soup that we're made up of carbon and all these different molecules. And right. All just, you know, now it's different obviously that, you know, this table and the laptop and these things aren't moving, but then you get into that all well, nature is alive and then we are alive. So then there are things I, I can, I can understand that, but, um, but yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, okay. Uh, we're talking about I am climate change. Uh, one of the things that I noticed about that is that unlike some of your other films, it involves voiceover. Uh, as opposed hey. Yes, my so, voice. Okay, so uh, talk to me about that. Talk to me about some of the stylistic changes that you made with I Am Climate Change or some of the, the choices that you made with that film. Can I read you the statement from Go. the film? Too? Go. I actually have it here. <clears throat> this, this short satire film, I Am Climate Change, transports the audience through the viewpoint of climate change. As the narrator, climate change asks critical questions of our human behavior. Climate change is happening now, every second, in every moment. We are not separate from nature and the environment. We are climate change. So I think it's very relevant revel now, in, at this time, with as we could see with the, the hurricanes and the fires and you know, and I, and I wanted to do it through the voice of climate change. You know what I'm saying? When you, you watch the film, it's the narrator is climate change talking to us. I like that. It's it kind to be my voice to make it more human. And I like that it's also kind of tongue in cheek because it's like, hey, like, you know, what's going, what's going on here? You know, I'm trying to help, help out. Yeah. It's like, you know, people, please get your act together. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, shifting gears, talking about Frequency, which is a, another film that, that you've done. Uh, right. Talk to me about that. Talk to me about what inspired that. And yeah. Yeah, I, I loved um, creating Frequency. And I'm going to read you, the, I have the artist statement for that too. So it just gives people an idea. 
and we'll probably also put it up on the screen as well so that people can read along. Oh, fabulous. No. Frequency communicates through nonverbal language the vastness of the infinite universe. It takes us on a psychological journey questioning whether our universe is just one or many coexisting parallels. Over a period of five months, I researched and filmed reflections on a lake surface. Every day that I filmed the lake surface, it took on a different pattern, from sunny to overcast to rain, from calm to turbulent. And so I did it over some months. I filmed it over um, about a four month period and you know had ideas for what audio to go with it and mary was uh, mary who i work with her name is mary tidy coil she was also we collaborated wonderfully and she came up with great ideas too for the audio so um it it was i i love frequency hmm. i could hear it over and over again it, I totally connect with it. I hope others do too. <laughs> Talk, so about that because it is experimental and it, and it is, you know, how, how do you get across your message? What are some of the things that you use and some of the techniques? Because I've been one that has been trying to get into experimental stuff. Uh, I have... I've had a, a lifelong feud with David Lynch and trying to figure out his films and trying to figure out that kind of stuff. So what, as someone who works in the abstract, what are some of the things that you use, whether it's shooting, whether it's editing, what are some of the things that you use to get across your message, whether it's in frequency or just in general? Well, I try and this is, <clears throat> this is not done through my mental, mm -hmm. but uh, I try to connect with people mm -hmm. on an emotional level. Like I, I feel like that my work connects with people on a very emotional level. I feel like art as a whole connects with people like emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I don't mean to sound but I feel like that's my purpose in being here, the connection and to have people connect with themselves and with a, a larger, uh, how do we say it? A larger perspective, a higher perspective. I feel like that's, I feel like that's why we're here to grow. And, and so when I, I come up with different ideas of what I want to shoot and how I want to do it. But a, a lot of it also comes up from, how do I say it? But the news inside of me, do you know what I'm saying? I come up with ideas, but I think what takes it out of the mental and gives it its magic is when it comes from an inner source as well. Okay. And I feel like that's where all my work comes from. So it's mine, but it's also universal. So I don't own it. Hmm. Okay. I, feel like, I feel like art, whether it be film, music, whatever it is, it comes from uh, the source of a person, you know, human being doing the work but it, it, it goes to a larger sphere of the universe, universal concept. To it. So it's a personal <laughs> film for you because it's kind of, it's, you said it's coming from within. Um, a, but because of the themes that you're working with, it's universal. So that, that right. way, and then it's about, like you said, getting, um, forming that connection with, right. with the audience. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what, what's been really great for me working on these films and Mary's been the editor on these films is that we come from, we of course come from different places inside who we are but uh, 
it works so well together. We collaborate so well together. I feel like that makes the magic in the film, the films that we do. So we mentioned uh, you, uh, Mary th throughout all this. Uh, can you talk about her and her role in your films? Yeah, well, Mary now too, she, um, she helps edit my films. She's the editor for my films and mm -hmm. we work together on getting what I feel in my direction into uh, it manifesting. And, you know, also she's very creative. So Mary comes up with different ideas too. So it works really well. And then we also work, you know, I, I do my fine art photographs and they're large scale. They're, uh, my work is limited editions of 10 and it's 30 by 45 inches and 40 by 60 inches, they're large. And so, you know, we have to work on them to print them. And so it's a lot involved. Cool. Yeah. Um, Mine, uh, what I wanna know, because uh, when, I, when I talk to people who are creative, I always wanna know like what their favorites are. Can you talk to us about, um, your inspirations in terms of whether it's filmmakers or photographers, that maybe people that you have watched or people that you look at and go, okay, let me borrow from them. Oh, this is a nice technique. Let me take that. Who are some of your inspirations? What's really great is I don't bought, borrow from anyone. Hmm. Okay. And I don't mean that to sound uh, arrogant, <laughs> but okay. I really don't. I don't borrow from anyone. But of course, I'm inspired by phenomenal art and, you know, photographers. Like, I'd say when I was starting out and who I love is Diane Arbus. Mm. You know, she was amazing in her work and very inspiring. And I remember looking at books of another photographer, Joel Meyerowitz, who I also loved. And... Um, I remember I, I did this uh, shoot and I did this photograph and my husband says to me, wow, that reminds me of Mark Rothko, the famous painter. And, you know, his work is phenomenal. So, you know, I, I am influenced, but, you know, nothing is new under the sun. That's another thing. Right. It's like, What's what my um, Gary always says? Uh, something like everyone, like nothing is new except when the artist does it mm. in their interpretation. But anyway, uh, I I am moved by in different films. Like absolutely move me. I, I love uh, the director uh, Wim Wenders. He's a German director, W-I-M-W-E-N-D-E-R-S. I'm not familiar. What were some of the other things that he's done? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember off the top of the head, but there's this phenomenal movie that I saw of him, his, that was, it was about, it was filmed in Germany, but it was about angels. It was Wings of Desire. That's what it was. Okay, it's, well. If you can, just write it down and, and get this film. It's amazing. Mm. It's an amazing film. And it's literally about angels, but not done in a very hokey way. Just okay. done uh, very straightforward. And part of it is in black and white, and part of it is in color. It's an incredible film. You know, what's the name? Wings of what? Wings of Desire. Wings of Desire. Okay, I'll check that. I'll check that one out. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other favorite films that you have, perhaps? Anything that maybe just stand out? I okay. I love. Uh, I love like uh, this artist. He's a uh, he does video. He's a video installation artist like me. Mm -hmm. But I think it's during the 70s. His name is Bill Viola. And his work is incredible. So 
cool. Yeah. All right. Um, this is uh, okay. This is going to be a bit of a tough question because uh, I can't answer it for my stuff. Um, what is what are some of your favorite films of yours that you've made? You mentioned Frequency. Uh, either it's that or maybe some of the other ones that stand out to you. I, I know that's tough, but like, yeah. you know. No, I love... I love uh, my film, The Voyage. I did a whole series of photographs and I did, and what I did was I went and I filmed butterflies and I spent several months just filming butterflies. And then I came up with the idea for that film. I love it. It's, it has a very magical feel. Uh, frequency, you know, I could, it's great when uh, you can see your films over and over again and you still love it, you know, and I, that's how I feel about frequency. I am climate change. I feel it's just a great satire and one that is like so relevant now. And, um, I mean, there's several. I just did one called, um, uh, it's Pixel. Uh, and I did uh, Pixel Beach, uh, Forest, no, Springs and um, the Beach. And that's great. There's like no sound to it. It's the Pixel series and there's completely no sound. Yes, I, I remember. Was, I remember watching that now. Yes, yes. Okay, I remember. Yeah. But yeah. it's the visuals and the concept for that. So, yeah. Do I, you, ha I, do you I, have? I, a, I man, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, do you have a least favorite? Like, when you look back and you go, either like you didn't enjoy it, or like you look back and go, eh, I don't know. No, I really? don't. Okay. No, every film I made. I made because I loved it and wanted to convey something through it. So actually I don't. I run into that issue where uh, whether it's high school stuff or whether it's like, eh, you know, just like this thing, what would you say to people like me where they look back on their work and go, eh, didn't really like it. Or, you know, just like, is it, is it a confidence thing? Is it that you, you knew going in and then you can take yourself back to that place of like, Oh yeah, I remember making it and like, Oh wow. There's so many great things about this. Yeah. Like I mean, when I, again, um, my work is very timeless mm -hmm. and it's not like I purposely do that, mm -hmm. but I find that my work is timeless. So if I go back to something that I did like 10 years ago or whatever, I, I still love it for what it is. In fact, um, one of my uh, photographs that I did, uh, it, it was used on a cover of Designers Today, this yeah. interior design magazine. And I did that like in 2002 or something like that. Hmm. But it still is so relevant because it has a timeless feel to it. Mm. All, right. all right, cool. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. What do you want to achieve when it comes to your career? Are there, are there goals that you have short term? Is there something that you're looking at a year from now or something? What do you want to do, what do, you want to do in your career? Um. I definitely want to keep making these films. I love making, I love creating films. And I would love to have my video installations um, in like high-end sustainable hotels in the lobby for people to have an audience. Um, public art, you know, I do public art with my work. 
Mm. So having my films out in public art is just incredible. And I love doing that and continue doing it. I had my film submerge, um, which was under the bridgeway between West Palm Beach and Palm Beach. And it was um, in this environment where you hear the water, it's under the bridge. So at night, it would be playing under the bridge and all these people, these audience came to see it and they just loved it. You know, and I love having my work screened in, in theaters and, you know, I just feel like, you know, I'm always just beginning right. to my next step. So I think there, you know, there's, oh, I'm always open to great possibilities happening with my work. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, where can people find your stuff? Where can people support you? And then uh, just kind of final thoughts, you know, what something that you want to address or anything? Yeah. Um, people can, you know, my work is collected and in uh, museums, permanent collections in museums. Mm -hmm. And so uh, people can find me by going on my website, you know, uh, naderphotography.com. Yeah. And uh, they could find me on Instagram. My handle is Cheryl Mader, M-A-E-D-E-R. And um, yeah. All right. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank thank you so much, Cheryl, for for coming on. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can you can check out uh, her stuff uh, on her website on her Instagram. Uh, be sure to to check it out. Uh, yeah, you know, thank you thank you very much for for coming on. Yeah, thank you very much for having this interview. I really appreciate it. It's been great. All right. Thank you. Yeah.